A couple weeks or a few messages back, we started a series called The Fight for Your Vision. The Fight for Your Vision. So I believe this is the third one. And in Romans 10, 17 is our text. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we got into what that means. And we've we heard this verse. It's a familiar verse. And sometimes we read verses and because we've heard it literally thousands of times, we don't stop and ask questions and, and we don't stop and say, you know, is there any more light or revelation that is in this? You know, the word, there's always more light and revelation. The Bible talk, says that the word of God is living. It's, it's, a, it's a breathing, it's a living thing. We don't read a verse and, you know, even John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. Is what it, how many, there is more light and revelation in that verse than we will ever exhaust. We will not get to the point where I know that verse. I know every single thing about that verse. No, there's still something the Holy Spirit can reveal to you in that verse. There's still something that the Holy Spirit can show you and teach you and teach us. Amen. So in here it says, so faith, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So evidently, we want to ask ourselves, what do we need to hear? What, what, what are we hearing that can cause faith to come? And what is actually happening? And we got into that, that when you hear words, you are seeing pictures and images, right? Words paint pictures and images. When you hear me talking, you are getting pictures. You are getting images. You are seeing something. You're getting a vision of something. When we, like, like we said before, if I say big black dog, you don't see letters spelled out. You don't see syllables. You don't see, you see images. And so when we hear from God, when we hear either in his word or from an anointed word being preached, it causes a vision. And until you have vision, you can have no faith. Until you see something, you can't have any faith. Amen. Until you until something is illuminated inside of you, you can't have any faith. And we'll expound on a little bit more. Proverbs 29 and 18. We, we've heard this. You guys don't have to turn there. You can write it down if you want. But it says where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. The NIV says it this way, where there is no revelation. That's the same thing, revelation, vision. You are seeing something. People cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom instruction. And it says, he that keeps the law happy as he, or he's blessed that keeps the law. But that's all they had in those days was the law. Now we have the whole thing. You know, so we can modify this to us and say that happy is he, blessed is he who keeps the word of God. Amen. When this was written, that's all they had was the law. So what does he mean without a vision, people perish? What, is he talking about this natural sight? That without natural sight, without people being able to see with their natural eyes, they're going to perish. Is he talking about this natural ability? Go to 2 Corinthians 4.18. I had you uh, save your place there. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4.18, and it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we are not to look at things we can see. But we are to look at things we cannot see. <laughs> How does that work? Think about that. We're not supposed to look at things we can see, but we are to look at things that we cannot see. See, there is both natural vision and there is spiritual vision. There's natural sight and there's spiritual sight, right? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, just in the next chapter over, for we walk by faith, 
and not by sight. Now, that sounds confusing. Wait a minute. I thought he said that we are not to look at the things we can see, but we are to look at the things we cannot see. And then he says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. No. So he's talking about a different type of scene. When, we, when it's talking about don't walk, we're not to walk by sight. It's talking about living our lives, conducting our lives, what we can see in the natural, with our natural sight, the natural things that are going on around us. But there is a vision that we are supposed to have, and that is a spiritual vision. It's a vision of another kind. You know, we, we need to be more aware that and more conscious of the fact that we are not just natural people. We are ju not just natural. You guys believe with me? I forgot to say that. Believe with me for the utterance that, that you know, the Lord, because he can say things to you that I'm not even saying, and that's best. But believe with me for the utterance. But uh, we need to be more aware that we are not just natural people. We are spirit first. We are spirit beings. And, you know, when we die and we go to be with the Lord, our spirit leaves this earth. If the Lord tarries, we'll still have sight. We'll still be able to see. You know, when you close your eyes, when we're worshiping and when you're praying, you can still see. What, what are you seeing? You are seeing into the spirit. You are seeing it's another type of vision. It's another way of seeing, right? It's like when someone is talking to you and they're explaining something to you. Maybe you've never, you know, they're trying to explain what they do at work and you have no idea of their, their, uh, that career. You've never been involved with that. And they explain to you, well, this is what I do at work and I do this and we do that and we go and take it here and there. And, and, and you've never heard of it. As the more they talk, the more you see it. And you say, oh, okay, yeah, I see that. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you're not seeing something out here, right? You're not seeing something in the natural. You're seeing something inside. You're seeing a vision. You're seeing uh, something inside of you, an image, a picture is being painted. And so that is in, inner sight, insight, inward vision. And so when the Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, he, you need to, there's something that you are supposed to be seeing when the word of God is being preached. When you're reading the word of God, you should be seeing a vision. You should be seeing an image. If you're not seeing anything, you're not have, there's no faith. No, if, no, no vision, no faith. No revelation, no faith. So our vision has the ability to produce faith. Again, words paint pictures, right? And the more, the more, you know, words I tell you, the more strokes of the brush are being painted on the canvas. If I say we, we went walking on a nature trail and as we were walking on the nature trail, let's say my wife and I were walking on the nature trail, uh, a wildebeest came out of nowhere and it was a hundred feet in front of us. What, what, am I, what am I doing? You are getting more images, right? And the wildebeest started chasing us. And we turned around and we started running. And as we were running backwards, we saw a vine and we grabbed it and swung like Tarzan from one cliff to another. What are you seeing? You're getting, an un, uh, yeah, maybe unrealistic that we would do that, but you are getting an image, a vision. Uh, right. You, you saw a picture, a clear picture of that happening of us doing it or maybe or maybe not. Maybe I can't see you doing that. But you know what I'm saying? Every word that I say is painting an image, is painting a vision for you. And this is the way Jesus actually taught. This is the way Jesus, he taught in parables. What are parables? Parables are it's, it's a way to explain a spiritual truth. It's a side-by-side -side comparison of a spiritual truth with a natural image, with a natural illustration. Amen? Go, go to, um, let me see, go to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Matthew, chapter 10. Uh, and we'll start in, um, 
Did I say Matthew 10? I'm sorry, Matthew 13. Matthew, go to Matthew 13. And we'll start <clears throat> in verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever has not, from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen, see not, hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, and you shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. What I want you to see is a con there is a connection here. Do you see this connection? Why are you talking parable? He's talking about there's a connection between seeing, hearing, and understanding. Now, he's not talking about seeing out here and, and hearing with your ears. He's talking about spiritual sight, spiritual hearing, and understanding. That means when you understand something, what is that? You see it. When you, so you say, I understand that, that means all of a sudden you see it, right? right. You see, and he says here, that without you seeing, uh, it says here, um, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Do you know that takes place first? That has to take place first. Before you can be converted, before you can be healed, you have to see it. And this is many other things, but I'm just going off of what Jesus is talking about right here. Before we, you can be converted, and we talked about this before, right? What is, what is the gospel what is the power of God unto salvation when you hear the gospel? What does it cause? Someone hears that they were lost, they were without, that they need Jesus as their Savior, or else they're going to hell. What's happening? They're seeing something. If they're open and the Holy Spirit's working on them, the Holy Spirit is painting a picture of their life that you need Jesus. And without Jesus, you're lost. You're going to, you're, you're, you're going to hell. But with Jesus, you'll have eternal life, right? What are they, what's happening? They are seeing it. They're waking up. They're like, oh, okay. And then they give their life to the Lord. See, without you hearing, without you seeing something, you cannot have any faith. You, you, without seeing something, you cannot have uh, any healing. You can't have any miracle. Go, go actually, um, Matthew 9. Go to Matthew 9. You'll see this at work here in Matthew 9. And uh, verse 18, this is a, a story that we've heard in church, the woman with the issue of blood, the hemorrhaging. And in verse 18, it says, while he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, my daughter is even now dead, but come and lay your hand upon her and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Let me just stop right there. Does she see something inside? Does she see something happening if she does a certain thing? She sees something, right? Amen. She sees that if I touch him, I'll be made whole. She's, she, she said within herself, what is that? She has an image. She has a vision. If I touch him, I'll be whole. And we'll get into this another time that, uh, well, should I get into that right now? Well, we'll, we'll talk about this in, in, in next parts of these series, but what if her vision was just to go a day without bleeding? What if that was her vision? See, it's all according to your faith. It's all according to what you can see. That's why you shouldn't pretend that you can see something that you can't see. Amen? But 
So she saw this. And but Jesus, verse 22, but Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So her faith made her whole. What? Her faith for what? Her faith that she saw inside that if I touch him, the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. I'll be healed. I'll be saved. I'll be sozo is that word. I'll, I'll be completely healed. I'll be made whole. And he says, daughter, your faith. He didn't say my power. He didn't say, hey, you know, today was your lucky day. He didn't say anything like that. He said, your faith made you whole. But do you see that seeing inside precedes seeing outside? Seeing inside precedes seeing outside. You have to see it inside first before you're going to see it outside. I mean, think about this. If you look at the other accounts and Mark and Luke's account of this same story, they, there were people all around Jesus pressing Jesus. Because when he said, who touched me? He turned around and said, who touched me? They said, Jesus, the people are pressing against you and you're asking, who's touching me? Well, why do you not hear about any of them getting healed? Any of them getting, you know, delivered? I mean, I don't think that there was only one sick person in a crowd of people that needed to be healed. You know, I mean, we can walk through in this place or go anywhere. All of us could use a little touch of healing here for this or that. Why was she the only one? That is, there's a record of Jesus saying, your faith. So evidently, the other people, they didn't see anything. Evidently, the other people didn't have a vision. They didn't see that they could be healed. And if you back up and, and you check this out in, in the other accounts, it says that she heard of Jesus. She heard. So what did she hear? She heard something that he, he, he heals this person and he did this and he did that. And she thought, oh, my, oh, my, if he did that for them, he could do that for me. If they were healed, I can be healed. And do you know that anybody, everybody, actually, whoever came to Jesus to be healed was healed. Everyone who came to Jesus to be healed was healed. And in all those situations, the, the, the 20, uh, about 20, some of were, some people consider some of those deliverance issues. But those cases, you could see their faith. You could see that they had vision. And we'll look at some of those later on. But everyone that came to Jesus to be healed was healed. They had a vision. They saw it inside. You know, that's why we have um, vision list. We have things that we are believing God, that we write down, that we are believing God to do uh, for the kingdom. We're believing we want to be able to write. We actually, we, we actually had a, a strike, a, a mark off recently of something we were believing God to be able to give and sow into the kingdom of God. It was a you know, a larger amount for us. But, you know, so we're so we write those things down, things that we're believing God to do for the kingdom, but things that we're believing God to do for other people and then things that we're believing God for ourselves. You know, your faith. See, your vision is the target that your faith aims for. I'll say that again. Your vision is the target that your faith aims for. If you have no target, if you're aiming at nothing, you're going to get nothing. You're going to hit nothing. You have to have a vision. Your faith has to have a vision. So your vision is the target your faith aims for. And your faith is what causes the vision to come to pass. We see this, right? She could have had a vision. And who knows, maybe all those people that were pressing against Jesus, maybe they saw, wow. I can be healed. But maybe they were talked out of it. Maybe their, maybe their grandma said, no, you, not you. You're not good enough. Because you know, if you know some of the background of these people, uh, you know, they question. You see some of this in other situations. They said, who, who, who sinned that this person was born this way, him or his parents? So they equated sickness with sin. That, that you know, that individual sin. 
Now, sickness is a result of sin in the earth, okay? But that's, a, that's another subject for another time. But who knows, out of all these thousands of people that are pressing against Jesus, what they saw. And who knows, you know, all we know is this person, this woman, acted. She released her faith. She, by faith, took her healing. She, by faith, received her healing. Jesus wasn't, he didn't stand up and say, everyone who touches me and touches my him, my garment, is going to be healed immediately. No, it wasn't. He was walking and she came and just took her healing. She just took it because she saw it. And the Lord, he's been talking to me about One Way Family Church, that One Way Family Church is going to be a house of vision. What does that mean? You know, the Bible says, the, the Great Commission, Matthew 18, 19, Jesus said to go and make disciples of all nations, to go and make disciples. Amen? What is a disciple? A disciple is someone that not only gets taught, but they follow, right? A disciple is someone that also follows you. They follow an example. They follow someone, right? We see it in the, in the Word of God, Jesus and the disciples. What were they doing? They were following him. Well, can you follow someone that you don't see? Can you follow someone that you don't have, uh, that you're never around? You can't follow them, right? If I say, hey, follow me to the store uh, after service. I want to take you and I'm going to you know, buy you a new pair of shoes. And you, I just take off. You don't see what store I'm going to. Can you follow me? No, you, no, you can't follow me, right? So you need to see someone uh, to follow them. But, you know, I was thinking about this. It's great to go out into the community and, and, and feed and clothe people. And I, I would like to get involved in some of those things. But a lot of the times you see those people once, twice, a year maybe. You know, a lot of churches, they do, do things on the holidays. They go out and, 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 you know, give turkeys and food. And that's a great thing. I'm not saying, I'm not knocking that at all. But Jesus said, go and make disciples. He didn't just say go and feed people. He said, go and make disciples. So when I say One Way Family Church is going to be a house of vision, people need to see something different, right? People need to see an example of faith. People need to see people getting healed. They, they, they need to see how you respond in situations. They, it, there's people out there, they've never had a father. They've never had a, you know, a good family situation. They've never seen what a godly marriage should look like. They've never had anything, you know, new in their life. They maybe drive an old, busted, rusted out car, you know. And so people need to see something different if they're going to come up and if they're going to do something different in their, with their life. Right. For the most part, people the vast majority of people are products of their environment, right? And, it, it, you know, I'm from where, where I'm not from, you know, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I grew up in the project. I could have easily, if I didn't have a vision in front of me, if I didn't see something different, I'd still be there. If I didn't see something different, if, and that's, that's how we are where we are right now, you know, as far as getting, you know, planting a church and things, because we started getting a different vision. We started week after week hearing the word of God and seeing faith being demonstrated, getting around people who are years beyond us in their faith and their belief in God and, and things are happening, miracles are happening and financial breakthroughs are happening and healing is happening. People that have been married for years and they're strong and, they're, and God has restored and, and strengthened them. And we see that, that challenges you to come up. You have a vision. You have something. You can't see that staying at home watching TV, watching a service on TV. You need to be around people. You need to get around the church folk and so people that are believing God and people that are doing something. You know, I know I, I, there's a, a lot of people out there that think, well, I don't need to go to church. I, can, I, I understand some people weren't able to go for a little bit, but I'm talking about people that don't want to go. They're like, I'm just going to stay home and just watch it online. You can't. 
You, you are going to stay where you are for the rest of your life because you, God has not created us to be an island unto ourselves. He caused, he created us to be around one another, to stir one another up, to provoke one another to good works. So you get around someone that has faith. You get around someone that has vision. There's someone that's seeing miracles. Someone that you're, you're driving a rusty old car and you, and someone that you know from the same background as you, same type of situation, they pull up in their new Bentley. <laughs> you see, Bentleys aren't just for pimps and drug dealers. You know that, right? So, so you, you, you 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 know you see them pull up and they say hey you, you, how'd you get that man the, the lord blessed me he blessed our business he, he he can do that for you what is that what is happening it's creating a vision inside of them they say man you mean god doesn't want me to just barely get by driving on the street wondering if my car is gonna break down nervous you know can you think of that what good father would want their daughter to be driving on the road in a vehicle that might, you know, shut down, might overheat every time they get in it. Brakes might go out, you know, the, the, the pedal might go through the floor because it's so rusted. What good father would want that for their child? If, if they did, that would not be a good father. If I say, here, daughter, here, take this car. Happy birthday. <laughs> what, I mean, is that a blessing? No, that's not a blessing. And so the Lord was showing me that one way family church is going to be a house of vision where people come and they see, wow, wow. You mean I could be a people that didn't have a dad. I can be like that people. But you know what? People need to come to church for other people to see that so that people that don't have that vision people. That's why you need to come to church. That's why we need to come to church so people can see what the Lord did for us and we can help other people. We can help lift up other people. Yeah, we can go out into the community and feed them and bless them, but they're not going to see you week after week and month after month and year after year. You know, but that's what happens when you're in a church family. People get around you week after week. But that's also why some people don't want to go to church because they don't want people to know how they really live and what it's really like in their life. No, you don't need to be ashamed. You, if, you're, if you're not, you know, doing well, well, hey, we're gonna cut. We can come to this place, and nobody's gonna judge you. But you're not gonna stay where you are. You're gonna come up. You're gonna increase. And then what happens? It's a it's a cycle. It's a cycle. You made a disciple. You made a disciple, and now they're follow, They got people following them, and they're not just the, the disciple anymore. They're not just the pupil. They have other pupils. They have other people following them and getting vision from them their family, and those that they have influences. Amen? Isn't that good? A house of vision. House of vision. It says this in Hebrews 6.12. It says, followers of them through faith, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Followers of them who through faith and patience, patience inherit the promises. You need an example of someone. Right. You need to see someone believe in God and, and going and when times are tough and things are challenging. You need to see how they respond in difficult situations. Right. You need to see people when when their backs against the rope, what they do. You need to see that. And, and when they overcome and they have success and they have victory, you can follow that kind of faith. You can say, I'm going to follow that kind of faith. I saw what was going on in their life. I saw what was going on in their body. I saw that what was going on in their finances. I saw what was going on with their kids in their marriage. And I saw them believe God. I saw them trust God. And look what the Lord did. Look what the Lord did. You can follow somebody's faith like that. Amen. Amen. So say this with me. One way family church way is going to be a house of vision. You know, it's not it's not all about us. It's not about us. It's about other people. You know, that's what that's what this is about. The, the advancing the kingdom is not just about you. It's about other people. But other people have nothing to look to if you're not advancing, if you're not coming up. They have nothing. They have no vision to see. You know, this is a community that needs vision. This is a city that needs vision. They need light. There is people walking in darkness and they need to see something different. Amen. Go with me to. Joshua 1 8. 
Well, actually, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3 first. 2 Corinthians 3. You guys, what, cold, hot? That's a, I know that's a loaded question. Everybody's body temperature is different. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 3. It's important we understand this. You know, there is a principle in the word of God that it's found in the word of God that what you see, you become. Whatever you're looking at, you become. 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So he's talking about you looking at the Lord. You know, it says in a glass, we, don't, we use mirror now, but it's like you're looking at him. How do you look at him? You look at, you're hearing his word. You're seeing his word, and you're, you're focused on that. Pretty soon you are changed and transformed to what you're looking at. See, you become what you see. You become what you behold. It says in the Amplified, in all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image and ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. You, you, you know, you can look and be around Jesus and look at Jesus so much to the point where like this is talking about that you start to be an example of Jesus. People look at you and say, man, that's a characteristic and a quality of the master, right? Have you ever, you know, been around a, you know, a, a mother or grandmother or somebody like that, and they're just loving and kind and so patient, no matter what people are doing to them or how people are treating them, they're just so kind and so patient and so merciful. What is that? You are getting a glimpse of Jesus. That's someone that has seen Jesus. That's someone that has, their eyes are on the master and they're being changed and, and transfigured to become more like the Lord. And we even see this in the book of Acts with the apostles that they were so bold in their faith and in their preaching that the leaders said, it says, the Bible says that they took note that they had been with Jesus. What the disciples were around Jesus, what were they doing? They were seeing him. They were seeing how Jesus respond. They were seeing how he, he interacted with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and what was happening. They're seeing his boldness and boldness is coming on them. They're seeing his faith and, and faith is rising in them. See, so you become what you see. You become what you behold. And so, you know, and this principle works good or bad. It works both ways. You know, a lot of times you see kids that they've seen their parents do, you know, some things. If their parent was a, a alcoholic for 20 years or whatever. Well, unless that child gets a different vision, sometimes you see the child go that same way. You know, or you see, a, 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 I'm not talking about one or two incidents that happen. I'm talking about a repetitive lifestyle of something occurring. You know, maybe uh, their father or somebody was in and out of prison, in and out of prison, in and out of prison. Well, I've seen where people themselves, because that's all they saw, that's all they know. They had no other vision in front of them. So this works both ways, good or bad. This works both ways. But if we allow God's vision and his words to get inside of us, if we allow his words and we meditate on his words, we can have a different image inside than even what we're seeing outside. And eventually what we're seeing outside will take place and produce what we are seeing outside. Amen. We, we said a couple weeks ago um, <clears throat> that there's things that we started speaking out. We started speaking and we again, we weren't speaking it off the top of our head. We weren't speaking just you know, some made up number, but the Lord gave us a number because we could see it. We, I could see us. We, and we started declaring this amount of money is coming into our hands in one month. This amount of money is coming into our hands in one month. It didn't happen. I don't remember how long it took the first time, a couple years. And the day came where that amount of money came into our hands. 
And then we said, okay, I was prompted by the spirit. We were, I remember we were, exactly, we were walking on a nature trail doing our daily exercise. And I said, you know what? This amount is gonna come into our hands in one month. Well, a couple years came and went. We would say it every day. What were we doing? We get in a vision. We saw, I, we, I could see it happening. And then the day came a couple years later where it was so close. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen. You know, and it, and it happened. And so what do we do? We keep increasing our vision. In my t I'm telling the truth, right? I'm t that's my daughter, in case you didn't know that. But it, it, uh, that happened. But if you have no vision, your faith has nothing to aim for. You have to have a vision. And so what are we saying? What are we seeing? We have to have a vision. And your faith will produce that vision. Go with me now to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And so we just building further on this foundation. I want this to be solidified. You know, I'm not going to be one of those, uh, maybe I'll do a single message here and there, but I, I believe that to get something inside of you, you have to stay on it for a little bit, right? You have to study it because then you see things. Like I said, the Word of God is living. You start seeing, wow, okay, hey, I see that more clear. I, and it becomes more stronger. It becomes a foundation. It becomes rock solid inside of you. The more you're on it, the more you meditate on it, the more you hear it, the more you see it. Amen? Yeah. Joshua 1.8 <clears throat> says this, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. So we say meditate day and night on the book of the law. Again, that's all they had back then. So we say the word of God. So when you are reading, let me just say, when you are reading the word of God, you're not just reading to get through to, you know, your chapters. Sometimes people in the beginning of the year, it's beginning, you know, January's coming up, people say, I'm gonna read the Bible in 90 days and they get those 90 day Bible apps. They said, I read the Bible in 90 days. Okay, good, but what did you get out of it? Did you see anything? If you didn't see anything, if you didn't get a vision of anything, then how did it help you? I mean, it's good to read the Bible, don't get me wrong, but if you're just reading it for facts, and information and historical reference. You know, there's plenty of atheists that do that. There's professors in academia that do that. They read it for history. They read it for facts and information, but they're not seeing anything. They're not getting anything out of it. So unless you see something, you, what was the point of reading? So when you read, read in faith, expecting to see something. When I'm reading the word of God, you know, during whatever quiet time, I'm reading it to see something that I didn't see before or to see something more clearly. And we pray that when we read, if we read together, we say, Lord, things that we have not seen, reveal it to us, show it to us. What is that? Sight, seeing. And things we've seen before make it more clearer to us than it has been. We pray that all the time, right? Before, before we read the word of God. Why? Because if I'm not seeing anything, how is it benefiting me? We need to see something. And he says here, this book of the law shall uh, not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Because what's going to happen when you meditate? You're going to observe to do according to all that is written. You're going to see something. You're going to see how to have success. And you're going to make your way prosperous. You're going to have good success. So meditation is imagining you are, uh, the Bible, if you look that word up, meditate, it means to study, to mutter, to plot. And if you look at those words, I think you can sum it up by saying you are putting your mind on something. You are putting your mind on it. When you are meditating, think about this, you're meditating on the word of God and you sit there and say, let's just say you're meditating on the love of God. And you say, you know, for God so loved the world. He loves me. He loves me. What are you doing? You're putting your mind on it. You're putting your mind on the word of God. And when you put your mind on the word of God, you are feeding an image inside of you. You are feeding an image. You are feeding a vision. 
You ever hear the phrase, you are what you eat? You, you all heard that phrase before, right? Well, that's true spiritually as well. You are what you eat. So you are either feeding your faith or you're feeding your fears. You know, you're, e you're either feeding a, a vision of victory, of healing, of overcoming, of prospering, or you're feeding an image of fear, failure, and defeat. There, you know, there's either two, you're only faith or failure, faith or fear. You're feeding an image in everything you do. This is, you know, the enemy knows this. That's why, this is why he had people locked up in 2020. And what, was, what were they doing? Watching the news and what was happening as they're watching the negative news all the time. They're getting an image inside of them. Oh my gosh, if I leave the house, I'm gonna die. Oh my, and hearing that day after day, after day, after day of the, of the deaths, of the people getting sick, of all the side effects. What's going on? An image, an image, an image is being developed. An image, a vision is being formed of you leaving, of you, of you getting COVID and you dying, right? Unless you were doing something different, unless you shut that off, unless you said, no, I, I believe the word of God, unless you got a different image in you, that's what the enemy was doing. He does this, he's doing this in all kinds of ways right now. He is trying to get people to feed on a vision and a vision of failure, of oppression, of depression, of you're never gonna have enough. You're, you know, you're getting older, you're not gonna have enough for retirement. What is he doing? Trying to feed you a vision of defeat and of failure, of you not succeeding, of the Lord not coming through for you, of you missing God and your life ending early. He's trying to get you a vision of defeat. And if you, you know, when you're in a challenging situation already, when you are being attacked by the enemy, when you're, let's just say physical, because we're talking about that. If you're being physically attacked by the enemy in your body, you don't need to be watching stuff that is going to feed uh, an image of you getting more sick, of you getting all those side effects. You don't need to be looking up documentaries and all the possible uh, things that can happen. If you're already getting attacked by the enemy, and when you, sometimes these things can be overwhelming. When, when you are fighting, you're endeavoring to you know, get a different image inside of you. I was talking to a friend of mine recently. He said, man, I, all of a sudden I had a spiritual attack and I was in fear. Like I, he said, I can't explain it. Fear was gripping me. I was afraid. I was in fear. And he said he, he got in the word of God and started listening to some teachings about God's protection, about God protecting us and delivering us and keeping us. And, you know, that left. What happened? He had to get a different image inside of him. He had to get a different picture inside of him. And if you are dealing with something in your body and all you do is sit there and feed that, that's what people do in the hospital sometimes. You ever go visit somebody in the hospital and they're sick with something, all they're doing is watching negative, the TV. They're watching news and all it, doing, all it is doing is feeding them more negative images, more negative visions. You can't, you can't, you do not have the luxury to feed your inside, your vision that those pictures of defeat and failure. You need to get a different image inside. We hope this message has encouraged you today. For more information on our ministry or to donate, visit onewayministries.net.